Plan Marcus, Mr. Zavon Jackson. How you guys doing today? Good, man. Good, good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Enjoying this day. Marcus, how are things going? Yeah, things are pretty smooth over here, man. You just caught me a little bit off guard. We're not talking Bitcoin, but we're, we're on a different subject today. So I'm curious to see how this will go. Let's do yes. it. Yeah, yeah. So everybody, welcome into Bitcoiners Guide. This is the show we wish we would have first we would have had when we first started learning about Bitcoin and health. Uh, so we made it for you. Today is Wednesday, November thirtieth, four oh eight p.m. and in the Mountain Standard Time. Price of Bitcoin is sitting around $17,000 doing its thing. Uh, we're going to talk more about health and fitness today. The low time preference of being healthy, being in shape, eating correctly. We have a very special guest, my trainer, Zavon Jackson. Uh, he's he's uh, so gracious to give us an hour of his time today. Um, just a little bit of a back story on Zavon. He's a former college basketball player. Uh, he's a certified personal trainer for about the last four years or so, if that's correct. Yep. Uh, again, like I said, he's my trainer in the off season. Uh, this dude is an absolute unit, 6'5", you know, 225 pounds, a lean muscle. He's going to be able to outlift you in the gym and then outskill you on the basketball court. So truly a rare breed. Uh, I'm excited to to speak with him. Uh, it's our pleasure to have you on today, Zavon. Thanks, thanks again for coming on. Yeah, of course, bro. We've been talking about it for too long, man. It feels good. To, feels good to be here. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> so, uh, let's get started. You know, just just a backstory. So, there's a lot of people who are probably listening who don't know who you are. Uh, my, I guess the biggest question is, how did you even get into training and weightlifting? You know, were you always into weightlifting? from a young age or did something happen where you started focusing on weightlifting? Like where, where does this whole story for you start out? Um, I think it, if it was more like post college life, so you know how playing college hoops is more like you're just getting yelled at by your coach to just do stuff over and over. So once no one was there to yell at me anymore, I was like, Oh, I don't really like what I'm seeing and how I'm feeling. And um, <clears throat> that was pretty much how it sparked, like what sparked it. And then after that, it was just, you know, it was just the endless, endless quest to try to figure out, you know, problem solve and problem solve, problem solve until, you know, not not to say that the product is ever done, but, you know, where you just have a, a much higher quality of life and like you just you feel great every day. Right. So that's that's kind of where it started for me. And then it's adapted over time from being more of like bodybuilding to more, you know, function of your body and, and how do my knees not hurt anymore and and just, you know, like looking good is one thing, but just having a body to just do stuff for you at the same time. Right. So I don't think, I don't really think you should have to pick and choose. Like I want to look good and just hurt. I just, you know, I'm just going to do both. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the things that we always talk about is, is like a lot of people when they, when they go and work out, they kind of dread working out and yeah. dread going to the gym and it's just a mindset shift, right? Instead of going, like, instead of saying, you know, I hate my body because I'm fat or I'm out of shape or I'm overweight, whatever it is, right? Whatever it is where you're lacking, which all of us have weaknesses, you know? And so instead of saying, hey, I hate my body and that's why I'm going to go work out, it should be the opposite. It's like, no, I right. love my body. I love, you know, I want, I want to continue giving more love to my body. And so the way that I can, that I can really love my body is by working out and keeping my body healthy and in shape and because this is this is the only body that you get and so you got to take advantage yeah. of it you know especially when you're young or any age when you can figure out like this is you know this is the body that you have this is the one life that you get to live and it's in your body your whole life All right All right and i think a lot of that too comes from like it's just a lot of social conditioning right so you kind of like see it on tv your whole life and you experience a little bit when you're young and you know, you got, you got the guy on your team that's a, you know, his head's in the clouds and your coach is like, all right, I'm on the line, you're going to run. You know? And it's like, these are the, the exercise related things that kind of just bleed over, right? into your adult life. And so now you're like, oh, am I doing something bad? That's the only way that I'll run. Or, you know, like whatever, whatever it was for you when you were younger, it's yeah. kind of like, like, I just know, I just know it. I was the guy that hated to run. Right. And so when you kind of just like take a step back and like, why do I think exercise is this or why do I think it's that whether it's good or bad right it's, it's just uh just a matter of just questioning like why why so 
once I took a step, I mean, it's just from my own experience. Like once I took a step back and I was like, oh, you know, my, my relationship with like fitness in general is mostly just like, you know, I like to play basketball, so I run, but it's not like I care about my body. I care about my lungs. I care about my, you know, and once, once you make that, that mindset shift, it's, I mean, that's, that's, that's everything. Right? So once you get to the other side of that, then you're kind of just like, what, what, what can, what, what's going to stop me? Right. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to get better at everything. So that, that's, that's kind of like where, how it got to where it is today. Yeah. And, and you know, and a lot of guys, right. If, uh, you and me are former basketball players or I still play basketball and you still hoop too. Right. And so um, even for people who haven't ever played an organized sport before keeping your body in shape and keeping and staying healthy is, is super important. And it, at, from an athlete's perspective, so for a lot of you guys who don't know, there was a time when I retired from playing overseas and I stopped for about two years. And like the first three months when I came home, I probably gained 30 pounds of fat just like that, you know, and no one could tell either because I'm tall and I and I could hide it with a shirt on. But, you know, anytime I would be in the bathroom, take the shirt off is like, man, this is not this is not good. I got to do something about it. And that's actually when I first started working out with Zavon was I was just you know, I wasn't even an athlete anymore. I was just a regular dude. And I want and I realized that, you know, I didn't like how my body was. And I didn't and I figured, hey, you know, I'm in my 30s. I can be in good shape for a long time. So I might as well get back in into good shape again. And and so I'll, what's hard for me a lot of times is just not, you know, I can go to the gym, but I may not know exactly what to do, what lifts to do, what exactly to eat. And so I think that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why we brought Zavon on today was, you know, maybe for those of you who have the desire, but you don't know exactly, you don't have the right information. We want to make sure that we can get that right information out to everybody, uh, whether you're an athlete or whether, you know, you you have a nine to five, whether you're a single mom, stay at home, mom, whatever it is that you are, like, we want to make sure that you have that right information. And I think that's something is from the Bitcoiners perspective, we we've been able to see the lies in money. And so that's like, we've been able to see like, Hey, you know, to get red pilled or orange pilled, whatever you want to call it. We've been able to see through the, all the lies that they've told us or the things that they've hidden from us. Um, they being, you know, the people who benefit from that. And so, I, you know, I just kind of want to dive in, you know, what are some of the lies or some of the misconceptions about health and fitness? Some of the biggest ones, you know, when you have someone that comes in for a consultation with you, like what are the, what are some of the hurdles that you have to overcome that that most people just that they just constantly say the same things over to you which are totally yeah. wrong you know yeah um i think uh, the most the most uh prominent one is the greens side of things right so people will come to say come to me and say i've been eating healthy but you know insert this here yeah and you know everyone's everyone's version of their you know health is different and stuff but I'm like, oh, so what does healthy mean, right? And they're, they'll tell me I've been eating salad and I've been eating my vegetables and I've been, <laughs> you know, and and it's funny, you know, like we we, we, we really do laugh about it now, but yeah. um, I think that's probably the most prominent one, um, you know, mistaking things that are low calorie for health. So like, yeah, like spinach is low calorie, but it's an inflammatory food, right? Your, your gut doesn't like it. Your body doesn't like it. Um, your joints don't like it. And it just gets marketed so well that people are like, Oh, healthy. Right. And so that's not, that's not a one, one time circumstance. That's, that's how a lot of it is. And a lot of the things that even, you know, most people think are healthy in general are just marketed very well. Right. So yeah. your, even your protein bars and your, you know, like it's just all the stuff that you see on TV and you see like, Oh yeah, you see the active people doing this and doing that. And, um, you know, it kind of just subconsciously bleeds into you about like, oh yeah, well, this is what I should be doing. That is what I should be doing. Um, and you know, like it's not as glamorous. It's not as pretty. I like, if I'm like, Hey, yeah, you want to be healthy? Like we're going to eat steak today <laughs> and <laughs> tomorrow. And you know, so, <laughs> right. So that's, that's the kind of stuff that I see, um, or I hear the most probably. Um, and then now, nowadays with social media, especially like, um, of, of the, you know, I, I train probably like 50 ish people a week of the 50 people that I train a week, like at least 10 of them once a week will come up to me and say, Hey dude, I saw this on Instagram. What do you think? Hey, I saw that on, on, what do you think? Yeah. Right. And, and I kind of like, you know, 
it's a good place to learn, but there's like, like you can understand it's very saturated. It's very like, people are very stuck in there. This is my way. And again, it's just marketing, right? I want to make money. So you need to buy my program, you need to buy my, well, whatever. Right. So that's where a lot of the training side of it is like, when you do, when you train in real life, it's a lot different than the social media side because you're yes. dealing with people face to face and they're like, you know, I got 57 questions for you. Right. And if you can't answer it, then I'll go to someone that can. Right. And so for me, I'm just like, I got, I, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I, I'm not scared to, you know, maybe say what people don't want to hear or maybe, you know, tell them that what they have believed their whole life is not the truth. Like it's all subjective, of course, but those are, you know, the, the social media side is definitely it's giving me a couple of headaches in my day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and there's like a lot of, I mean, even just simple misconceptions, like, like with seed oils, you know, how seed oils are very inflammatory that they can be toxic and just something so simple as cooking with in vegetable oil, right? It sounds like, Oh, vegetables I'm cooking in vegetable. Like some people might think that that's healthy for them. And so, you know, just those little things are, are so important to, to get the things that are going to hurt you or going to cause inflammation in your body to get those out of your diet. Super important. Um, and, you know, when you, when you talk to a person, right, like say a person comes in and says, Hey, you know, my knees have been hurting, my hips have been hurting or something, you know, they got joint pain or knee pain or some type of pain. Um, how do you go about helping that, that person? You know, like what's, What's your process that you go through to, to help someone who, who may have knee pain or joint pain or some type of pain, back pain, which a lot of, you know, a lot of people that, you know, once, once they start working, right, they sit down for, for eight hours a day, they're at a desk, they're hunched over. So what, what's your type of, what's your process that you go through to help people uh, to, to get more life back into their bodies? Yeah, and this is this is really a this is a, a cool question for me because I I feel like I've just been through it right, and so especially when you live in the basketball world, you're kind of like, oh, you're you're a basketball player, your knees are supposed to hurt, or your body's supposed to hurt, and you're you know, like I'm sure you've heard that for a long time too. Yeah, but I was I was hearing that when I was 14, and my knees hurt, and I'm 15, and my back hurts, and I'm like, what's going on, dude? Um, and me and my mom are having the same problems. Like we're like. T telling bad knee stories right and i'm just i'm a teenager yeah and i like you know i've never like I've, i didn't think about this until i was a little bit older but i always knew something wasn't right about that um and that's that's part of my process too is like i just gotta stop hurting like i got i can't live this life where everything hurts right so mm -hmm. um that was my first little like um dip my toes in the water about nutrition um and and you know, it, it's so simple and it seems so like first grade once you come on the other side of it, but you're like, yeah, what, what goes in comes out. Right. And so like, if you put good food inside your body, um, you know, good subjective term again, but put some good food inside your body. Um, you start to feel better and you start to have more energy and you're not tired and you don't, your joints don't hurt. Right. So that's most of my, like <clears throat> my immediate process. And then, you know, there's definitely exercises to help strengthen and, and increase blood flow and all that stuff too. But mm -hmm. you know, if you want, you want your body to feel good, especially that's just, it's just your, it's just straight your new, your nutrients that you put in and put out. So, you know, a lot of people don't ever take control of the food. Right. And they're like, Oh, I just eat. This is what my family's been eating. This is just how we eat. Right. <laughs> and you know, people think like, you know, this is genetic or what it's like, you know, the only thing that's really genetic is just your habits. So you learn how to eat from your parents who learn how to eat from their grand, you know, and now here we are three generations down and we think that fast food is breakfast or we think that, you know, the gas station is where you get food. Right. So this is, these are things that yeah. they kind of, you know, it, 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 it just comes. If you, if you get a salad from Seven Eleven, there's nothing wrong. It's that's healthy, right? <laughs> right. It's a salad, right? It's a salad. <laughs> so just like taking, taking power of your food and trust me, I mean, it's the hardest fight to fight ever. Like we talk about this all the time. It's, it's just, it's just a beast. And mostly because there's not like, like it's a, it's a full lifestyle change. It's not like, Oh, I'll just eat out half the time. Right. Cause like, for example, like the gym is like, Oh, I'm going to start to work out. I'll go once a week. I'll go twice a week, but mm -hmm. you eat every day and you eat multiple times a day. Yeah. Right. So you just like reach these like points in your life where you're like, well, I'm going to win. This. I'm either going to win this battle or I'm not. 
right? And once you can, like, we talk about this all the time too, is like putting your days together, like not just one day, not just two days, like of the 30 days in a month, what are we talking about here? Right. Yeah. And that's where, that's where the real power comes. That's where the change comes. That's where, you know, not only the physical changes, but your brain works better, your body works better. And like, <clears throat> that's, that's a different life right there. And honestly, it's easier that way. Like if you just, if you make the decision and you say, Hey, I'm going to commit to this, like, I'm going to honestly commit, like, you, like not just words, but you're like, look, I'm going to, I'm going to, I have a workout plan. I'm going to stick to it. And I have a nutrition plan that I'm going to stick to. Like if you stick to that, you string up the days, the weeks, the months, you know, then in three months time, I remember when we, when we first started working out, I, I texted you and said, Hey, should we work out four days a week or six days a week? You said, well, if you want to see better results faster, come six days a week. I was like, all right, cool. Let's do six days a week. Yep. And then, and then we would do, go six days a week. And then I would, and then it was just like, I was building on good things that I was like a good foundation. Cause as now I was working out six days a week and, and no one here has to work out six days a week to, to be in great shape. But that was just what I decided to do. And then I was eating healthy, you know, and, and because I was working out, then I just had more incentive to eat healthy. And then I go look at the scale after two weeks, three weeks, four, you know, a month. I'm like, man, this is really working. And so once you start to see results in my mind, then it's easier to stay committed. And so if you can just, if you can get past those first few days, those first few weeks when it's really hard and your body and your mind want to revert back to your old bad habits, like if you can stay on it, then that's honestly, that's like the biggest thing in my, in my opinion is, is just making sure that you string up, you know, good weeks, don't lie to yourself and, you know, fully commit. So, so Marcus, you know, uh, I, I've been hearing you haven't been working out lately. Is that true? <laughs> I've been traveling a lot lately, so that's, <laughs> that is true. It's kind of hard to, um, you know, when I was back in the Netherlands, I had uh, I was going like three or four times a week, so I didn't have trouble then. And I guess my luck has always been I always loved sports. So I never had any issues or get, getting motivated to go to the gym because I just enjoy doing sports, you know? Yeah. But like a lot of friends of mine, they're like, oh, you know, it's always I really have to drag myself off the couch. And once I'm there, I'm OK. Or afterwards, I feel good. But it's always so hard. I just don't have that problem, you know, and. So I guess everybody's motivation is different as well. And their goals are different as well. Like for you, you're a professional athlete, you know? So your reason for going to gym seems really like almost part of your work, you know? So it's, it's, for other people, it's like they want to lose weight. Other people, again, are there in there for the aesthetics, right? They just, they don't want to put in the work, but they love to have like six pack or whatever, or, or like these big arms or so... Yeah, I'm just listening to you guys. It's really, um, it's a little bit off topic for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm mostly, and you know, one of the things you mentioned is like, uh, you know, the food stuff, like certain things, like I just heard you say like, okay, no, no fast food for breakfast. That just seems like such a no brainer to me, but I do realize there are people out there that just really, really eat unhealthy. And that also makes me think of, you know, I'm traveling now and you know, in Holland, I had sort of my shopping list, you know, of like products I, I like to eat and like steak was one of them. But also like I like, uh, for instance, like the Greek yogurt in the in the morning, you know, I make shakes with that and stuff. And then when you're traveling, you realize how different the supermarkets are in different geographies, you know, and how hard it can be sometimes or how yeah. expensive it can be, depending on where <laughs> you live as well, to get the healthy food. So. Yeah, there's so many aspects that, that go into this into this thing. So, yeah, <laughs> that, I don't know what else to say. That, that's what comes to mind right now. Yeah, I, I do think I would like to talk a little bit more about like the getting specifics on, on the diet. And and we, and but one thing, you know, is when you think about eating healthy, a lot of times it does cost a little bit more than than eating just like the regular sludge <laughs> that, that we're fed, that we've been fed our whole lives. But I look at it as as like a upfront cost it's a, it's an investment and if you take care of your body now then you won't have as many sicknesses diseases and all these things that come with you know and, and that's not like always for sure right just because you eat healthy and work out doesn't mean you yeah. can't get cancer you can't get whatever but you have a better chance of of staying healthy longer of not getting as sick you know if you get if you even during times of like covid right the healthier people you know, obviously there were some outliers, but a lot of the people who were healthy, worked out, who ate healthy, 
didn't get nearly as sick when they got COVID. And so I think that was, you know, an eye opener for me as well was, Hey, what happens if there is something that's going around or if I just want to be able to do my work on a day to day basis? Well, if I'm working out, if I'm eating healthy, then I'm giving myself the best chance to not get sick. And, and that's a good upfront investment for me because, you know, maybe I have to pay more money in the long run. If, if I have more diseases or sicknesses or different things that, that come about that, you know, I got to go to doctor's appointments more often or whatever it is, you know? So, um, so talking about that, what's, what's kind of like you and me have talked a lot, you know, personally, Zayvon about, okay, well, what should I eat? You know, I think that's one of the things is we can tell people, Hey, don't eat this, don't eat that, whatever it is. But if someone's listening right now, what should you be eating? And, and like, let's break it down for people. Like what's, what's a good diet, a healthy diet that the people should eat. Yeah. And, and this is, um, this is an interesting one too. Cause I've had to like kind of piece these ones together, you know, I'm talking about it sometimes too. It's like, I train people that have diet preferences. I'm vegetarian. I'm vegan. I'm, you yeah. know, they, they, you name, you name it. I've, I've heard it. Um, and so, you know, just trying to find something that works for you is a little bit different than like, Hey, like I want, you're going to be, you're a professional athlete. You need to eat like this. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think I like, this is just a little off topic too, but just getting to the root of these problems is like, you're, everyone is like diet cultured and you're already trained that way. Right. So you're like, I'm going to go on a diet. I'm going to do 75 hard. I'm going to be yeah. a, a seven day juice cleanse or something. Right. When really you're like, what, what are you going to, what is the one thing for sure you're going to need to do for the rest of your life? You're going to need to eat for sure. Mm-hmm. Right. And so instead of thinking, approaching it as like, Oh, I'm going to do this to lose 15 pounds for my wedding. You're just like, it's more of a restructuring of like your relationship with food. Right. So your relationship with food is, it is the most important thing. If you have a bad relationship with it, you know, it controls you and, and vice versa, right? You have a good relationship, you, you're, you're in charge. So um, all that aside, I, I would say like most, the most important thing is like I center most of my meals, tell this to everyone to send your meals around protein, right? Um, mm. Different qualities, different levels, different sources. Um, your body, your body absorbs animal protein and animal fat the best. Right. So um, if, if they don't have any dietary restrictions, we're talking about like steak, beef in general. Um, you know, me and you talk a lot about like grass fed and grass finished stuff. Um, just yeah. like thinking about what your food eats um, and that kind of translates into like how it makes you feel when you eat it. Right. So um, just like animal side. So, you know, beef and chicken, um, you know, de- even even pork a little bit. But centering most of your meals around protein, um, we're Marcus was talking about some Greek yogurt stuff too. Like Greek yogurt is awesome. Um, and, and it's all very uh, circumstantial to who you are, right? So if you're like, oh, I, I don't like the, like I have a lady that I train that says she doesn't like the texture, right? Yeah. And we're like, and we're like, okay, well, you know, if you, if you, and I give her all the, all the benefits of it, it's like, if you just like, are you going to make that trade or no? Right? Yeah. And so um, centering your meals around protein. And then I would say too, is like getting your protein earlier in the day. Um, a lot of people eat their biggest meal for dinner and, you know, we, I, I, am guilty sometimes as well too, you know, I'm busy and have a job and stuff, but, but in my perfect life, you get your protein early. All right. So you it's, it's a little bit backwards in how society teaches you other like breakfast, lunch, big dinner. I would say big breakfast and then kind of work your way down. Okay. Um, but you know, uh, uh, one of my favorite things that I've heard in my journey of fitness is five ingredients or less in your meals. Right. And that's, um, that's a hard one. So it literally almost anything that you go to pick up in the store or anything, you look at the back of it and the ingredient list is 25 things long. Right. So, so here's your, here's your challenge to you is like go seven days where you eat five ingredients or less meals. Mm -hmm. And I can almost guarantee you, you'll feel better and you'll look better and you'll start to, you know, so that's how far, that's how far, you know, that's the difference between like our, um, the generation above us and like you know my grandparents like my grandparents grew up like on the farm eating you know root, like milking cows and, and getting eggs from chickens and you know there's not a lot of middle ground in the middle like a uh, processing plant or anything right um but like you know the ingredient list for eggs is just eggs but it's not <laughs> eggs with vegetable oil yeah. and you ground know. break ground bacon right <laughs> yeah. right right so no salt um, sugar all that kind of stuff yeah. right and and especially in america you know like we're we're just the, the king of preservatives we're the king of 
the lowest cost, the, you know, and then, I mean, like, I, I do get it, but when we're talking about like taking control of your own life, like you can't, you can't rely on people that make money off of you to expect to care about you as a person. Right. So they're kind of just like, it, it benefits, benefits these big companies a little bit more to have you fat and lazy and, and, you know, for lack of a better term, complicit. And you're like, Oh, well, if it takes a little bit of effort to do this, I'm just, I'll just chill. Yeah. Or right, even so. like addicted to, to some of these foods, right? Like a lot of these, a lot of people are addicted to, to these, you know, all the sugary foods that are out there and it's yep. hard for people to stop. And, you know, and, you know, one of the things, right. Like I've talked to you about Texas slim with the beef initiative, you know, when it, when it's, it's interesting because just what you're talking about reminds me of the beef initiative, because a lot of people, they think the beef initiative is just about eating beef, but it's really about, it's, it's about matching, ranchers with demand with families who who want healthy good foods that are local that are local and fresh meat that they that they know where it's coming from you know and and you can get a package that says you know usda meat and it's really sourced from china or sourced from another country and you have no idea you know you can get ground beef that has 89 different cows in it in one little pound of ground beef and so like getting back to Hey, like finding these ranchers because historically ranchers have been, they have been uh, incentivized to sell their meat and their beef to multinational corporations. So, you know, one of the things too is is to be able to to find to find people close to you, like in your region in your area. If you can find access to a rancher, if you can find access to to good meat where you know, like, hey, the, these are good people. These ranchers are feeding their cows. You know, grass and they're grass fed grass finished and all these type of things then that's that's a lot better than having to trust your grocery store and you have no idea where this food comes from what processes that those foods have been through and you know and what effects that that's actually having on your body in the long run without you even knowing right all right and that's that's one thing that i think um it's, it's very important too is like i was just reading this thing the other day and it says you you like especially at the grocery store you're you're laid out with the illusion of choice right so yeah. you walk into the grocery store and you're like oh my gosh there's all these brands there's all this food there's all you know different this different that but it's all ran by the same like eight or nine or ten companies right and it's really just like you go look at the ingredient list you if you didn't know what the product on the box was you'd be like this is pretty much all the same stuff right so you're yeah. it's the illusion of choice you're like oh i'm gonna eat a a uh, uh, low fiber, high calcium, you know, maybe you're going to eat Cheerios because they, t- they market heart health or whatever. Yeah, right. Yes. But we're just going to look on the back of the ingredients and say, hold on, this, this is very comparable to your lucky charms. This is very comparable to your fruit loops. Right. And that's where I think, you know, I mean, I, I never learned any of this stuff in high school, right? Like I went to college, I had to get a degree in kinesiology to like, even, you know, like take nutrition classes to even hear about this stuff. And I still didn't even really get it until I was like living the life. Right. So um, that's where I think, you know, like I I go to the grocery store and it's like, not, it's not a, once you get through it a little bit, it's not a project anymore. I'm like, yep, I'm going to get eggs. I'm going to get meat or not meat. I'm going to get egg. I'm going to get fruit. I'm going to get honey and I'm going to get butter or something. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's about it. And I'm going to go home. But once you, you know, get out of the, this is how it's always done. You know, you're kind of your whole life. You think like you're going to eat cheap food, right? You go to school, you get free school lunch, you go to, you know, and that, that carries you for a long time. You go (laughs) to, you go to, you go to college, you're on scholarship for food. Right. And they're not (laughs) like, Oh, I'm going to give you a scholarship for the grass fed meat. No, like, there's, Come to there's the cafeteria. No, there's not enough money. You don't get enough money in your stipend for that. type of Right. So, right. So that's where, that's where I think on the, um, you know, like it's just, a, it's just a different thing. Right. So like, you're like, yes, I'm spending more money on food. Yes. But you're not paying for the ingredients. You're paying for the lack of ingredients. Yeah. Right? And that's where I think people, I mean, I you know, know, I, I, it's hard. It's hard. Right. Cause we're talking about money and finances and, and, and life. Right. So like, Oh, you got a family to feed, but you actually care about your fitness. Now those, these are the, these are hard combos to have. Right. Yeah. And well, you know, one of the things, just the point I wanted to bring up too is, at, you know, wh- whoever you are, right? If you are wanting and desiring a happy life and you want to progress in life, obviously, you know, 
Marcus and I really believe that Bitcoin is is a way to store your wealth. And, and we believe in that low time preference. Don't worry about the volatility and and save in it now. And, and later on, you're going to have a lot of wealth saved up that can't be debased. And if you're going to have a lot of wealth, you also have to focus on, OK, how am I going to enjoy that? And, you know, am I going to enjoy that with a healthy body? You know, have I been taking care of my body this whole time? Like, what's the point of waiting, you know, and stacking Bitcoin for 10 years or 15 years if in 10 to 15 years? you know, you're a hundred pounds overweight, you know, everything just doesn't seem to work right in your body. And, you know, so the whole goal is not just, not just ending up at that point with a lot of money, but also ending up at that point with a healthy body, with good relationships in life. And, you know, and just overall trying to progress and, and being able to give back and mentor and help others along their way, along their journey in life. And I think that's, you know, one of those things is, is health is super important. You know, when you don't have health, you really recognize it and you don't know how long you can be healthy for if if you aren't intentional about about, you know, what you're eating and, and how you're working out. So I wanted to go through a couple of misconceptions. Right. So when we talk about animal meat, right, one of the things that I really enjoy is animal fat. Um, so my question is, does animal fat make humans fat? Does fat in foods make fat? people fat or what you know what makes what yeah. makes people fat right because i'm sure there's a lot of people out there the majority of these people listening i bet want to lose weight and want to lose fat so what makes you fat is it animal fat is it something else and 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 what's the best way to, to go about losing fat you know yeah i would say um just nutrition wise would be more like you know there's there's different levels of everything right there's different levels of of computers all the way up to the most expensive there are different levels of, of, of gym equipment all the way up to the most expensive so it's the same thing with food right and there's different levels of food so if you're going to go find stuff in a wrapper or in a pet in a package or something um you had just have to think about how it's made right and if you're looking at the back like on the nutrition facts um it'll tell you the how much fat is in it and how much and how much and how much right so we're going to look at, let's just say like a box of like wheat fins, right? You look on the back of the wheat fins, there's like fat in wheat fins, mm -hmm. right? This is mostly just the oil that they cook with, right? So this is what go back to that sea oil combo yeah. we we're having, right? It has fat in it because it's, it's vegetable oil and canola oil and, 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 you know, sunflower oil and all that stuff, uh -huh. right? That, so that's, that's the bottom level of fats. As you climb the ladder a little bit, you're like, it's just called like your, your, it's bioavailability. So how well can your body absorb it? Right. So when we're talking and meat is meats on the top of the top on the other, on the other end of the spectrum. Right. So you look at like, for example, like a steak, right. Ideally we talk about the grass fed steak all the time. Yeah. Um, it's, it's full of protein and it's full of fat Yeah. and yeah. it's going to go, your body's going to absorb it. And fat is one of those things that you have to intake it to release it. If that makes sense. Right. So yeah, at any point, what do you mean by that? Exactly. So like, you know, if your body doesn't ever get good quality fats, it just holds on to all the fat that it eats. Okay. That makes sense. Right. So like, let's say, um, like you, I'm starving, sure we all are starving almost basically. Right. Like, your right. nutrient, your, you, your lack, it's like the old saying where, you know, we're overfed, uh, but we yeah. have, but there's an under amount of nutrients, uh, for right. that, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, you know, let's think about it. You know, I'm sure we all know a few people with some big bellies or whatever. Um, and, and you're like, wait, but I eat fat and, you know, and I have a big belly. And, and then you like put the pieces together. Cause I mean, this was just me. I just used to have a big belly and I'm like, hold on, like my fitness, you know, tracker, the guy on YouTube said I need to eat protein, fat and carbs. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just your quality. Right. And so, um, one of the things that I have people do, and this works like a charm and they think I'm a genius for it. I just say, look, just cook your food in butter. Yeah. Right. And that's just animal fat. So, um, ideally we know the different levels of, of everything really. So that it goes all the way up to grass fed butter and it goes up to ghee butter and goes up to beef tallow and all sort of stuff. And these are just animal fats. Right. And so once you start to put, get some good animal fat in your diet, then, you know, you feel like you have energy. You feel you're starting to get in better shape. You start to feel like that fire burning inside of you of like, dang, I'm kind of on fire today. Um, and and that's, I don't know, you got, you got to, you got to live that feeling to know that feeling, but you know, that's, that's like where you want to live your life. Like 
you know, not on the other end of what can't I do or where, what, what, what am I going to have to, what do I have to do today? It's really just like, what, what's going to stop me today? Cause mm-hmm. it's not going to be me, you know? So yeah. that's just one of the things where you, you, um, it's a very, it's a huge misconception about fat. Right. And it's just the word. So it negatively connotates in people's head about like, Oh, I'm going to eat fat. I'm going to get fat. Yeah. But so what causes, so what causes people to get fat? And like, if it's not animal fat, what causes people to get fat? Like, you know, everyone says sugar, is it overeating? And like, how, and if you are a fat, like what, what am I doing right now? If I'm fat to not be fat and what can I do to get, to, to lean up, you know, to get more. Yeah. Lean? Yeah. And, and, you know, this is, this one hurts people's feelings a lot when they come and see me and I'm like, I'm sorry to tell you this, like your exercise is this much. Right. And like, you know, you, you know, personally, like we work out pretty hard, yes. but it doesn't, it yeah. just doesn't work without the food. Yeah. Right. And so, um, I would say to people like the seed oils, the sugar, the gluten, the preservatives, the, you know, if you look at the back of stuff and mind you, like, I'm just speaking from like, you know, as the American experience right now for the, for the masses, but, um, these are all things that just kill your metabolism. All right. And so now like your metabolism and you probably heard this saying a few times in your life too, is like, Oh, I'm getting old. Oh, well, uh, you know, when I'm getting old, I gotta, you know, I gotta slow down. You, you know, I'm gonna have the young kids do it for me now because I'm old or whatever. The biggest excuse, um, right? It, it's a humongous excuse, right? And then you see people like, you know, you see people like LeBron, you see people like Tom Brady, or like, wait, wait, they're they're 37, but really, like, you know, in the in the process of human life, it's really not that old. Yeah. Right. Now, granted, they do have millions of dollars to spend on right. trainers and. <laughs> And chefs and all that other stuff, but it's still possible for someone. But you see, like, right, you see the capabilities of humans in general, right? So, like, as you, um, in the process of trying to lose weight, I would say if you can get to your, if you can get rid of those things out of your diet, you'll see it. You'll see without even having to lift a weight one time, you can, you can start to see some good results. Just like, you know, maybe you don't have time to go to the gym, but you do have time to like care about what you eat. Um, that would be, the one is just the elimination of all the fake stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think right. sugar is a you. I think sugar is a huge one. And again, I'm no nutritionist or anything. Right? So I just didn't put that up front. But I think a lot of people have no idea how much sugar they consume, even just in their drinks. You know, I honestly just drink water most of the time. And also in alcohol, there's like a lot of sugar, right? If you're a big wine drinker or a big beer drinker, there's like tons of sugar in there. Yeah. And I think also in uh, people like to put sauces on their food, you know, like they, they like to go crazy with all different kinds of sauces or whatever. They just consume tons and yeah. tons of sugar or sugary stuff. Yep. And, and it's very like, it's, it's so subconscious, right? And you're like, Oh, I just do this cause it tastes good. Or I just do, you know, like I've been drinking wine since I was, you know, you, you just, you just kind of like validate these things in your head without really taking like personal accountability right and that's where like everything that goes in your body is your fault it's your fault so you have a choice of whether it's going to be good or bad or who you're going to support or if you're going to you know pay these big companies you're going to pay your local farmer like Mm -hmm. these are the things that trickle all the way down to they, they 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 essentially make you who you are and it it's not only on the outside right it's like the way that your body works and the way that your brain functions and how fast you can do this and how, you know, how rested you feel, how easy it is to go to sleep. Like, you know, these are, these are things that people just have problems with. Like, you know, I have a lot of people that have like sleeping problems and I'm like, did you exercise today? Did you eat real food today? And most of the time the answer is no. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, but, they, but their, but their answer to it is like, did you exercise or eat well? They're like, no. I went to the doctor and my doctor said I should have this or I should take this or I should, you know, and this is, this has been my whole, this is my favorite part about Sean really is like, he, we just get it on this level of like, yeah, you know, you got to do your own work first before you're like, Hey, outside sources help me. Right? Yeah. But I mean, so, because half the time you go to your doctor and your doctor is overweight, you know? Crazy. So, so what does he like, I would rather go to some, like, it's just, I would rather go to someone who's do who's living, who's living it and, and can tell me and can give me like, instead of giving me a pill, like maybe the medicine is in my food, you know, like maybe the medicine is in, is in working out, getting full range of motion. Maybe that's where the true medicine is and not in some lab created pill. Most of, most of the time, honestly, most of the time. Yeah. I mean, that's how we've lived. Humans have lived for thousands of years. 
and so you know what's why why all of a sudden is obesity an issue you know um, yeah. so okay one more question about food right vegetables and salad right so we've kind of touched on this i'm sure a lot of people want to know because this is this is one of the biggest things that you're told your whole life hey vegetables are healthy salads like that's how if you want to lean up go eat a salad go run you know get get on the treadmill eat a salad and and that's what's going to get you lean what so why why what's what's the issue what's wrong with with that thought process and what's why why are salads and vegetables not necessarily as healthy as what everyone thinks that they are right um and that's that's this is the you know this is the one i have i fight this battle a lot too people they either love it or they hate it right but um but we want to know the truth like we just tell us right right? we like i don't care about any other preconceived notions we just want to know what what's the truth on this yeah so the, the, the truth is like everything that's ever been put on earth has some kind of defense mechanism right we got our hands we got our teeth animals got the claws the things the 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 you know, all that stuff. Um, same with plants, right? So like you think about a plant that has a defense mechanism, you're like, oh, like Venus flytrap. They got the mouth that closes and eats the fly, right? Um, that's not a that's not a unique experience to just that one species of plant, right? But every single plant that ever has ever lived has some kind of defense mechanism in it. And most of it is inside of the plant. Makes sense, right? So these, these um, Salad foods, right? Your leafy greens, your spinach, your kales, your your uh, romaine lettuce, your um, even broccoli a little bit. These are all things that you notice the animals that have the best physique, so to speak. Like a lion is not going to eat broccoli, right? Um, and and you're you're like, oh yeah, well, duh, because lions eat meat. But truly, <laughs> there was a there was a time along the evolutionary process that the lion ate vegetables and had a, had a bad reaction. So they evolved to be better than that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then the other side of this is like, oh, but I know like there's a lot of animals that eat vegetables that look good, right? Like, like you know, like horses are, for example, they're all muscle and they eat grass. Yeah. Um, but then you're just thinking about like the inside. So cows, horses, all that, they got multiple stomachs. They have multiple ways of digestion. Cows have five stomachs, right? So, you, you know, and so when they eat the grass, they their body can absorb it get all the nutrients out of it and get rid of it. Right. But for us, when we're, you know, let's just say your diet is, is predominantly leafy greens. Um, when we eat that, it's, it's, it's just straight inflammation, right? So you eat that and your, your gut swells up, your intestines swell up, your joints swell up, your knees hurt, your, you know, and the only, com the only way to combat that is to start to get some animal protein and some animal fat. All right. So what, where the slope gets slippery is like, I'm vegan. I'm vegetarian. Yeah, because and, so, yeah. So, what do you say to people, right? Because there are a lot of people out there who are vegan and vegetarian, and they yeah. swear by it, right? And they go, "Hey, yeah. look, this is this is great for me. This works well for me." And maybe it does work for them specifically, right? For you know, not everyone's body is going to be the same. So, what would you say to someone who is vegetarian or vegan, who who may, who may never eat meat? You know, like yeah. what what's kind of the thing that you say to those to people that that lean that way i would say like you know i just think that they they're they're just having to be realistic with how they expect to feel right, right. so like seeing body changes like and you know this is why it's stupid because there's netflix documentaries about oh this is a bodybuilder that's vegan right it's not about like you can shape your body any way you want protein carbs and fat it doesn't really matter what what, what it's made of mm -hmm. right you can drink protein shakes till you the wheels fall off yeah. um and, and still get in shape right so that's that's one side of it but versus like how you feel um when you you know i did have one lady who made the switch right she was vegetarian and she's like oh, i just can not i couldn't figure it out um i'm not losing weight i'm you know just kind of stuck i was like all right well if it's not an ethical choice if it's like you know just one of the things that you're willing to do like try it and it just lights the fire makes you lose a bunch of weight has lots of energy you see her at the gym every day yeah and, and it's just a different life right so for the other side of it, I would just say like, you know, it's more of a, you just kind of going to have to give and take a little bit. So if you're like, oh, I care about animals and I want to keep animals alive, you know, different combo for a different day, but okay. Like we can still get you in shape. You can still, you know. Yeah. I mean, and there are a lot of animals that are killed in, in the, you know, in the vegetarian diet, or vegan diet with, you know, mice and mold and, 
all the yeah. things that try to eat your plants they have those have to be killed so you know, there's right. always going to be animals that that die for a human to survive whether it's yeah. eating them or not eating them i mean and who's to say that a mouse's life is less important than a cow's life you know so yeah yeah so it's just hard to it's hard to when you, when you talk about the ethical way but you do want your cows to be treated well and that actually makes a better quality of meat you know yeah so. and that's very that's very i mean that's what i'm saying like that's that's a very important part of the process right so like yeah. where i buy my meat from like i can see a camera of what the cows are eating like right now yeah and, and this yeah. life we live in right i'm just on the internet like like show me the farm and you get to see it and you know i go to the local farm over there by the gym that we go to and you like you're you're driving up and you see the cows on the left and the goats on the right and you know you're like yep this is where i'm getting my food from you know and there's no preservatives or you know blah 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 so that's where i'm not pro like you know slaughterhouse or your whatever like it's more of like okay well even if i'm gonna eat meat i just want my quality of my food to be really good yeah yeah right? and that's and, and that's just a simple it's just a it's a blanket statement there's no you know except for this, but that, but it's just like, no, like every day for three meals, at least I'm going to eat really high quality food. You know, yeah. your metabolism starts to get back up there and everything starts to work out. It's supposed to work. Hey, maybe a question, right? Just to throw it out there. It just crossed my mind. I heard some people talk about, you know, like fasting, for instance, yeah, you have that intermittent fasting thing, or I've even heard people say, yeah, I fast like at least one day a week where I just don't eat like anything. I just drink water all day. Yeah. Apparently, that's supposed to mimic like uh, the, the old days as well, where you wouldn't like have food every day, and that would actually be good for. Anyway, is yeah. that uh, any knowledge or any thoughts on that subject? Yeah, I would think it's it's a it's a little bit different. Um, if you try to live the Sean life, where you're you know a professional athlete and you got to work out every day and you got to run, you got to lift, and you know got like that. That's that's a little bit different. But just for the um, just for the general population, I would say it's good. I wouldn't say you need to do a 24 hour fast or you need to not eat for a week or something like that. Um, my philosophy on it is just to give your body a break from digestion. Right. And so, um, I don't necessarily stick to this every day. Like I'm not like, Oh, I just can't eat until this time or something. I kind of, you know, you just listen to your body, but, um, I try to give myself at least like a 12 hour window. So I eat my last meal at 8 PM or whatever and won't eat again until 8 AM. Um, there's just some self healing and some repair properties that go on in your body that like, it just doesn't happen if there's food in you. So, you know, this is uh, it's a pretty trendy thing as well of like intermittent fasting to lose weight. Essentially you're just eating less calories throughout the day. Right. That's, that's the whole marketing scheme behind it. But um, there is a lot of like health benefits to just giving a, giving yourself a digestion break. Um, and you know, it, there's some, some religions that practice this and there's some some trend diets that do this kind of stuff too but you know we're talking about like sustainable nutrition um it's a little bit harder to like figure out your food so to speak like how how can i eat every day and still feel amazing um, but sometimes like people need it right and so sometimes for me like for example thanksgiving i'm eating a lot for multiple days in a row just you know just going at it um like i'll take a little bit of a break of eating Right, and give myself like a 14 or 16 hour window and then back businesses businesses back on right so i don't think it should be a punishment or uh, uh you know I, I i ate too much or i feel fat so i have to not eat you know that's where it gets a little bit slippery but just as far as health benefits like you know if you're if you're giving yourself 12 hours every day um you still get you still get some of that good stuff from not having anything in your system for a little bit so you know, me, I, I work out, lift weights at least every day. So you need, a, you need some food for that. But, you know, days that, days that, days when it's a little less, um, I'm not opposed to, you know, just saying, all right, well, you know. Yeah, yeah all right. I, I tried it for a while. One of the funny things I noticed was I was always somebody to say, like, for instance, I have to eat something in the morning or else I'm going to feel like all dizzy and, you know, I'm not going to make it to 12 o'clock. But once you try it for a couple of times, you realize, hey, no, it's not that bad. I'm actually not hungry at all. And I can easily you yeah. know, stay eating. <laughs> and then later when yeah. I was like trying to gain weight, because I was always mostly like into running and stuff. So I was never really like bulky or anything. But at a certain mm -hmm. point I was like, you know what? I want to gain some more weight. 
And then my trainer was like, okay, well, you're going to have to start eating. You know, like you have to eat a lot. Yeah. You know? Like preferably yeah. six to eight times a day. <laughs> then I had trouble with that. You know, it's like yeah. also a different kind of food you're eating. But um, yeah, I, that's the, that's the weird thing about it. You know, a lot of people do not think too much about their and they're just stuck about in their in their patterns and stuff. But there's a lot of stuff you can do and change and feel, you know, feel the effects yeah. of that. So and, 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 you know, a lot of these things, too, are like you eat breakfast in the morning because you've always done it right you're like yeah my you know when i was a kid we just had breakfast in the morning right and not to say that it's good or bad either way but it's just one of those things where you're just like you're never really asking why so sometimes i'm like i'm not hungry I'm just gonna go to work or whatever right um but you have to listen to your body right i think that's you just gotta, you just, yeah you just you gotta, gotta listen. listen and it takes time to start like you at first when you start doing it you don't really know how to listen to your body but i think that's something that's important is to is to try to become more in tune with what your body is asking of you you know what foods is it asking and and being able to withstand a little bit of hunger from time to time is okay yeah. and when you like if you really are trying to put on more muscle and more weight then you do have to eat more than what you would think is what you think you should so there's yeah. there are little things that that come into play with that yeah. And, and it's, it, I think too, it's very, um, it's very interesting because you, when you take control of your food and you have the power, you're like, you know, you just realize like how uncomfortable you are with yourself. Right. Cause I, I mean, I just know this, I was, I went through this, um, you know, it's late at night or I'm just watching TV. I'm watching a football game or something. And I'm just like sitting there watching, like, I feel like I need a snack. And I'm like, you know, if I don't, I mean, I remember a couple of times I'm like reaching for like invisible snacks just because it's just habit. Right. And so it's, 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 um, you know, you, you just take control over it. And most of the time you're just eating because you're bored or you're eating because you feel something emotionally. Right. And, and as you're, you know, when you're young, like, I know, I just know this too, for real, because it's me times a million, but like, you're just an emotional eater. Right. So you're happy. You, we won the, we won the game. Let's go out to eat. Oh, you're sad. Don't worry. Let's go get Oh, your boyfriend broke up with you. Like, oh, let's go get ice cream and watch, right? And so these are the things that, like, you see it on TV and you see it and it just bleeds into your head about, like, okay, well, if I'm sad too, maybe one day then maybe if my boyfriend breaks up with me, I'm going to go get ice cream. It'll make me feel better too. Yeah. Right. So and you're maybe, just like, maybe... sorry, brother, go ahead. No, sorry, I kind of interrupted you there. You no. just got me thinking. You're, you're talking so um, passionately about food. So it makes me think, you know, like, how much time have you spent like studying uh, food and diets and, and this topic? And are, are you like that food guy that when you go to a party and you're talking to friends, this, this is all you talk about? Like, you know, when you go to the gym. And then I'm wondering if you're in the gym with Sean, how does that work? Because Sean can only talk about Bitcoin. You can only talk about food. Okay, now we ended up, this is how we ended up here, Marcus. Exactly. <laughs> now, um, I, I was just thinking this too. I told someone else this the other day. It's like, no one cares how much you eat until you change the way you eat. Right. And so like when I go to my family events yes. and my, 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 this, why are you, why are you only eating this? Why are you only doing that? Why? But if I was just like, here, give me a pot of my plate. Like I remember I used to do this too. Give me another plate. Give me some more. Give me some more. No one says anything. No, oh, Zavon, Zavon can eat a lot. He's, you know, but I'm a balloon after but as soon as I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't really want the pie. Come on, you're a big guy. You're a good eater. Come like, on, let me finish the pot here. <laughs> right? So why, I think okay. I, why, why is that, though? Why, why, do people, why do people not care when you eat bad, but then all of a sudden when you make a decision to eat well, why does everyone got to know every little thing about, like, what you're eating and everything? Like, what is, what is that? Like, why do people care? Right. And, and, and I had to ask myself that question a lot too. Um, I would say it comes more from the lack of knowledge, right? Cause we're talking about, we're talking about nutrition and most of this stuff is like foreign concepts. Yeah. You're like, I've never heard any, I've never heard anyone tell me not to eat vegetables before. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then I go to my family events and I'm the only one that looks like me. Right. And I got some muscle and my shirt's tight and stuff. And you know, like my sister's grilling me. Why, wait, why do you do this? Why do you, why do you, why do you, Right. That's one side of it. Um, and then the other side is like, oh, you're, you know, and this is like some social pressure stuff too. It's like, you're, you're not going to eat this dish that my family's been making for mm -hmm. the last 50 years. And I'm like, no, grandma, I'm not going to eat this, you know, sugar, sugar pie, whatever. Yeah. Right. So that's where I think like 
you know, it's, it's with the gym too. It's with food. Um, you just have to break, you have to break these cycles. Right. And, and it's an unfortunate and it's hard combos to have. And you're kind of just like, well, you know, like, I'm sorry, grandma, you've been wrong for the last, however long, however many years about nutrition, right. It's about other things different, but like you, you're having to break these cycles. And when you're, when you're trying to break the cycle, you know how it goes. I mean, you know, it, this is why we kind of related the Bitcoin to, to this side of health and fitness is like, you're just thinking different. Right. And when you're thinking different, like, people a are super into it or they're, they're turned off by it. Right. And so mm-hmm. that's where, you know, with family, they're like, I can't, they can't be turned off. Like, not like I'm not going to talk to you anymore because you don't eat salad or something, but like their, their way of figuring it out is like, let me, let me in on the, on the process a little bit, you know? And so that's where the Bitcoin and the food kind of come into play is like, I'm, I'm not necessarily thinking in the box when it comes to like what I've been told is true about food yeah definitely okay what what, another question about food that i had and i know we're getting kind of close on time but but so say you are talking to a vegan or a vegetarian who doesn't eat meat because of not because of health purposes right they think you know what what would you say to someone you know what, what what is their argument i would i should say of you know why would they say that meat is not healthy the animal meat is not healthy for you and and kind of what's your argument to to counter that you know yeah usually um usually these are people that are a little like maybe born in the 80s born in the 70s around there and there was a little time in the 2000s and late 90s 2000s of of just about like red meat is bad for you and Mm -hmm. milk like you know before they before the got milk thing is like you shouldn't be eating, you shouldn't take too much dairy in your diet and you shouldn't, whatever. Um, and as with anything, some people just took it to as, as you know, as law, right? So um, a, a lady that I trained as vegetarian, she was like, yeah, I remember back when I was young, um, my, my mom saw this thing or whatever and told me like, yeah, you shouldn't eat red meat because it's going to raise your cholesterol and it's going to get you at risk for heart disease and mm-hmm. this, this and that when, you know, really you you just look at it and you're like oh well they just can't make money off of farmers only right so it's it puts more money in their pockets to say buy the pepsi buy the you know i'm gonna go get a celebrity or a rapper or somebody to come advocate for my my product you're like oh i want to be like him too i'm gonna go buy this i'm gonna go right but if i say hey i want you to eat like steak and eggs like who like who makes money off that really the farmers yeah right so that's where i think there's been a little bit of like just misinformation right and the people that come to me with that kind of stuff i'm like okay i'm not gonna put your your experience down i'm not gonna say that you've been wrong your whole life right this is the benefits of eating animal protein at that yeah I think that's, right yeah I think and then when good, right yeah yeah and then that usually sits that usually at least lets them make a decision right because you see like oh your animal your animal fat's gonna get your animal protein is going to get absorbed at 60 percent 70 percent then you look at like your plant proteins your plant proteins are like 15 percent 20 percent and you, some people see those numbers and they're like dang All right so if i'm like oh yeah i need you to eat this much uh you eat a steak you get this much protein but you're a vegan so the only like you know your options are this this and that and they're like oh well i have to eat like six cups of quinoa to like equal one chicken breast all right and you're like yeah like that this is this is the bioavailability of stuff All right so yeah. that's where i think it's it, it's a little bit crazy because our our us as a society have just evolved so much and technology and computers and all you know but us as a species we're kind of the same right and so like we're just a little less hairy now i guess than we were <laughs> when we were cavemen right but like over the whatever like let's just say since like the 1700s like humans ourselves hasn't changed too much right but our society has so that's why i think like people are thinking oh society is changing i got to change this i got to change that and really your nutrition is just your foundational like humans were put on you know not, humans eat this this is what humans eat yeah right and and i say this too is like if i asked you what like what do a, what does a panda bear eat like you already know the answer to bamboo right? and i say what is it what is a giraffe eat? you're like leaves right but you're not like, oh yeah, he eats like plant-based, he eats 
meat based, right? You're just like, he just is what he eats. So it, that's kind of how I view. Yeah, it's what the species eats, right? It's what the species eats. Yeah. So this yeah. is how I view nutrition for humans in general too, is like, I don't care if you're a boy or a girl, I don't really care. It, you're not the exception to science. You're not the exception to evolution. You're not the only person ever that doesn't need to eat animal meat, but you know, you have these, these things up here. We'll start spinning a little bit and that's where you're trying to navigate. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, if, if you are a vegan or vegetarian, it's not like we're trying to hate on you at all. Like it's just, you know, what we found is, is eating animal meat is it's, it helps you. It helps you as you train, as you try to get rid of inflammation. Uh, so, you know, maybe, and maybe you don't, you feel like, Hey, I have a great diet, a great body, vegan, vegetarian, you know, that's great too. So, um, but, uh, okay. One, one more thing. Uh, steroids what, what what are your thoughts on steroids what about and protein shakes yeah okay. yeah, yeah protein shakes steroids. Because i know i know like basically everybody that goes to the gym at least that i know they're all like drinking protein shakes so is that good or bad and then you have like that next level stuff where you go on steroids or what do you call it like uh um, I know the Dutch name for it. I don't know the English for it. There's uh, like cre- creatine or something. That kind yeah, of stuff. Some people think yeah. Cre- some people think creatine is steroids, right? Yeah. So maybe yeah. break that down that like protein, creatine, steroids. Like what type of supplements should people be taking if they are lifting hard? Yeah, um, try yeah. to make it as black and white as possible. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. Uh, I would say like most of um, you know, the, the most important part we talked about this early on is is the protein, right? So every person has like their own math problem of this is how much I exercise or move my body throughout the day. This is how much protein I need to eat on the other side. Um, and, and ideally you get most of your protein from real food. You have that combo a lot. Now for guys like Sean, who's in the gym all day and running and playing basketball and doing all kinds of stuff, his number is really, really high. Right. And so if you're a high, if your number for how much you're supposed to eat is, you know, like Sean, you're trying to eat 300 grams of protein or something like that like supplementing with a protein shake is not bad. Yeah. Right. Because there's only so much money. Like, you know, if that's the case, Sean's eating like five steaks a day. (laughs) Right. And it's just not, it's just too much. Right. So yeah. um, If you can get, I don't mind eating, I don't mind eating one ribeye a day though. That's been really good for me. That's, that's the apple a day right there. Right. Yeah. But um, so that's like, yeah, I, even I use it, but again, there's levels of protein. There's like cheap protein. That's not going to digest well. And it moves all the way up to like, you know, they have grass fed protein too. Um, okay, and, got it, it. It, and it digests really well. Um, so it's really just like a supplement if you don't get enough protein in the day. Right. Um, especially when you lift weights, like you need, you, it's a very easily quick accessible, just make the shake, shake it up, drink it right after you work out. Um, and it kind of good, like, it just does what it's supposed to do. So definitely pro pro in that, in that side of it. And like, I have to take it too. Right. So it's just one of those things where, um, especially if you get no protein in your life and you're like, what do I, do I have to eat steak? Like you can just drink a protein shake in the morning and at night before bed. Um, and that usually will at least start to, so, start so to- especially, especially the vegan should definitely get some protein shakes in there. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> and, and, but you know, that's, that's that that's what I, that's what ends up having to happen with most of the people they're they're shaked up right so you're not going to feel quite the the physical benefits i feel amazing but you'll see you'll see the changes in your body that you're trying to see um uh the next step to creatine creatine perfectly natural perfectly normal your body makes creatine right now um you, you there's creatine in beef there's creatine in fish you get it in food for me like i eat a lot of beef of course but i don't really eat fish like that um I supplement it and it's definitely a good supplement to take if you're like trying to build some muscle, trying to get some, trying to get real strong. Um, but even if you're not, so usually um, on the bottles, they'll tell you the serving size. I just take five grams a day, which is like one scoop. But if you're not lifting like two and a half grams a day, three grams a day would be just fine. Um, and that's just keeps your heart healthy um, and helps your body kind of like put the, put the muscle where it's supposed to go. So to speak, like it just helps you get, helps you, helps you build muscle essentially which is a, a big part in, you know, like getting in shape. And, and I'll say something on creatine because I used to be scared of creatine because I had no idea what it was. And, you know, when I went to college, my weight trainer in college was telling me to take creatine. I was like, nah, I don't know, you know, but I yeah. take the protein shakes. And then when I started working out with you, I take creatine. I was like, nah. And then like these last two years I've been in Spain, my trainer out there, 
you know, for the basketball team, he was like, he's like, you're working out a lot. You know, you're taking protein. You should be taking creatine too. I'm like, okay, every single one of my players <laughs> is telling me to take creatine. Obviously, it's not like it's something natural. It's something good for you. You know, I've never had any any of these trainers tell me to take steroids, but they told me to take protein and creatine. You know, yep. and so I think one of the things that they say is make sure you're drinking drinking you know a good amount of water when you do take yeah. protein. But but it's you know other than that, it's it's natural. Your body makes it. Yeah, perfectly normal. I remember when I was in high school, um, a couple kids on my football team, and this was before, like, I guess the era of information. So you could just look it up. But they were taking creatine and then going to football practice and then coming back and drinking more, but not drinking any water. It's like cramp up. And then they're, you know, they're having some heart, heart health issues. And I remember that was a big thing, like, on the news. And I was hearing, like, you know, like there's a lot of, a lot of anti don't do it type of things. Um, and it kind of just like went away. But at the time, you know, it was like, oh, you're, if you're going to take creatine only, then yeah, you're going to, you're going to have some issues, but just like as a supplement at one time and, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, um, you, you've, you've experienced, I experienced too. It's, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's not, but, and, and as well, like, you know, being a basketball player, you get drug tested as well. Yeah. Creatine is not something, it's not even something close to you know, something that, that they drug test you for as far as like performance and hinting drugs are concerned, you know, so yeah. like, yeah. that's pretty yeah. funny because I've, I've grown up and I'm not an expert in the field and I don't think about it a lot, but I always have this thing in my head, like creatine bad, but that was yeah. literally always in my head. I don't know where it came from, but I've been programmed that way. <laughs> that's right. It's another one of those lies, dude. It's another one that's of those right. lies. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah but but perfectly perfectly yeah. natural, man. Like, like everyone, we, we all make it right now right so just like most of the time people don't get enough from their food or from their diet so it's great it's great you know great to supplement but right. go, talking about the um steroids we were having this come a little bit today it i think it's all just depends on your goals right so if you're a bodybuilder you got to go get paid to go step on stage and pose and you know see all the muscles and stuff if it's, it puts money in your pocket right so so i'm not anti against it but just for like, you know, especially where we live, um, there's a big culture of just like teenagers, 17, 18 year olds taking, taking some kind of steroid to try to look better and have big muscles. And, um, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, this is my favorite part. It's my favorite thing Sean ever says about the low time preference. Right. And it's really just having a high time preference. You're like, Oh, I want these results right now. Right. And, and we know as with anything, it's not going to last. It's going to, you know, you're going to fall off. You're going to balloon up. Eventually you're going to stop lifting eventually, whatever. Yeah, without, Versus, thinking about the without thinking about the consequences. Either. Right. Right. And then there's all kinds of side effects and there's all kinds of health negatives and all sort of stuff versus, you know, it might take you a little bit longer. You, you know, yeah. you're only going to have tens on each side for a while. Like there's a lot of ego and, and stuff that goes into the gym, which I love. We don't really have that. And it's more of like, hey, dude, we're just going to try to try to figure out how to get better, you know, and and the results really do speak for themselves after you stack the days together. Right. So you're like, yep, I've been lifting for me and you've been lifting for three years. When we first started, you can lift this much. Now, today you lifted the most you ever lifted. Right. So it's yeah. just one of those things. It's like you're going to put them together. You're going to put them together and you're, you're really strong and you work really well when you come out on the other side. But again, it's a low time preference, right? So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of energy. It's, it's a lot of consistency, up, right? It's, it's, it's snowing outside. Are we still going to lift or, you know, yeah. it's just one of those things, dude. So that's where the results, you know, people just couldn't imagine. And I get, I get that sometimes, dude, are you, are you taking steroids? You know, it, it kind of just hurts my feelings a little bit. Dude, Cause I'm like, Hey, like I, I bust my butt to make sure that like, this is going the way that it's supposed to go for real. Right. So that's why I, it makes me laugh to have conversations with like 50 or 60 year olds that come to my gym. Oh, when you're, when you're my age, you'll know what I, what I feel like. And you'll know, and, you know, these are people that just come to the gym. They like socialize and talk to people. And I'm like, okay, yeah. well, you know, good for you too. But like, I won't feel like you when I'm 60, that's for sure. All right. So th these are the things that kind of like, you know, obviously anything can happen at any given time, but I'm just trying to shift the odds in, in my favor the most of like, you know, if something crazy is going to happen, it's going to happen anyway, but I prefer to be really, really healthy when it happens. Oh yeah, definitely. You know. Okay. Well, we're, we're kind of closing up on time, but I, you know, one last question, if you could recommend three, just three lifts, right. 
to people who are listening in, what would those three lifts be just for overall body health? You know, someone who wants to get started in the gym, they don't really know what to do, but they, you know, they listen to the podcast. They're like, okay, I got the food part. Maybe I want to start lifting. Like what, what would you recommend? Just three simple lifts or three lifts that people could do. Um, yeah, we talked about this today too. Um, one is like the deadlift. I love deadlifting so much. Um, do need a little bit of coaching, a little bit of form. So like, that's another one of the things where you got to leave the ego at the door. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter how much you lift, you know, just that one's just recruits probably the most muscle, um, gives you the most benefits long-term. Um, two is like the sled. So it's getting a little more popular now. We've been, we've been talking about this for a few years now, but, um, pushing and, and pulling a heavy sled, amazing for your blood flow, for your knee joints, your ankles, your hips, um, yeah. just yeah. overall cardiovascular health. It, it kind of checks a lot of the boxes too. Um, and then I would just say like, I would just say some, some sort of, of body weight exercise that gives you a challenge, right? So like a for up. us, it's like, it's pull-ups, right? And then, yeah. you know, he, Sean's six, seven, I'm six, five. That's a long way up and a long way down. And it's a beast. And we talk about how much we hate it all the time and they never get easier, but we still do them. They do not. Um, and that, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but, Sean, so. Sean showed me how to do a muscle up the other day. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, I can't do that, man. That's not, that's not for me. My arms are way too long for that. Yeah, so th- like those those are the type of things that, you know, like they're not, they're just, they're just, they've been there forever, right? We've been doing pull-ups forever, dude. And, yeah. You know, one of the things that it's always a challenge and it's a mental and, and you know, you just kind of see that you get actually see progress over time. It just doesn't happen fast. Yeah. Right. And so before when you're doing six pull-ups easy, now we're doing like eight pull-ups easy. Right. And, and it's just one of the things where you just keep coming back and keep coming back. And even if you, you know, like your, your body, your brain loves to close the loops. Right. So you start to get on that pull-up machine and you can't do a pull-up. You're like, all right, well, I'm going to figure out a way that, so that I can get there. Yeah, exactly. You know, so that's, I'm those are, those are the you didn't say, I'm surprised you didn't say squats in there. You know, I was, I was, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, well, well, I think we're, we're coming on time. You know, we could be talking for a long time. I mean, we didn't even get to talk about cardio or recovery, massaging, stretching, cupping, those type of things, which, you know, maybe we'll have you back on and, you know, in a year's time and, and get to do this again, hopefully. Um, Hold on. Before you before you do close tomorrow, Sean, I do yes. want to know, because since we're coming out this side, where are you on Bitcoin? I know we weren't going to mention uh-huh. this, but I just, I'm, I'm curious. So. <laughs> what do you, like, where am I? I'm, I'm. Like what's I'm your take? Be on, just be honest. You don't gotta. You don't gotta fake yeah. anything. Like just you know. Oh no no I'm 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 very sold and you know Sean was talking a little bit earlier about like being red pilled and orange pilled and stuff. I kind of I kind of got red pilled a little bit about the money, um and and obviously you know Sean's a great guy to talk to about it. But you know these these trends that these are these are trends that go along all aspects of life about you know, like how fitness is and food and it goes into your money and your education and all this other stuff is kind of just like, there's a lot of flaws in the system. So I'm, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big fan, bro. Big fan. I'm, I would definitely say that (laughs) if I had a choice, that's my preference. Let's just say that. But, but Sean, but you know, I talk to Sean every day. He's always letting me hear about it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm trying, I'm trying to get there's no way he's not talking about it. <laughs> yeah. i'm trying to get some things just they could it takes marcus you know it takes time to learn about bitcoins so yeah. but one of the biggest things i tell him is you know no altcoins yeah. uh, that's definitely something that i've been trying to to talk about and and then just like you know just trying to figure out what the problem is in the first place i think that's the same thing with him him figuring out like working out food like you can't like if you don't think you need a solution, then you're not going to be looking for a solution. And I think that's sure. that's the issue with with the money is a lot of people don't even realize that we're getting stolen from by inflation and and a ton of other ways. Uh, and and so I think that that's one of the, the issues about people understanding Bitcoin is you have to understand the problem really before you understand what like why you even need a solution. So yeah, yeah. Well, different combo that's we can go in we can go down that rabbit hole you know, we'll yeah be here, we'll be here till tomorrow dude yeah exactly so well thanks thanks again zayvon uh give people a handoff too you know where they can find you 
um, on Twitter, Instagram? Is there anything else that you're working on currently that people say people wanted to reach out to you if, if you know, like for a program, if they want to do some online work with you, like where can they reach you? Yeah, my both my Twitter and Instagram are Zayvon J, um, J A Y at the end. They're I'm I'm a little more active on um, Instagram just for training purposes, but um, I'm I'm a, you know available all the time, and I try to give the game away as much as I can too. But um, starting to get into more like online training and online programming and one on one stuff with people who are you know like you who want to like really really get after it. Um, just kind of helping people through all these you know, all these things we were talking about today and all these problems that happen day to day. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's really good to, it's really good to, to be able to like really just help anyone. So that's where, that's where, um, that's where it lies. And just, you know, just messaging me for right now. And then we'll, eventually we'll have some, some online program stuff that people can just snag and go. So. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's it's been a pleasure having you on. I, I really enjoyed it. It's a little switch up for us from all the Bitcoin talk to really get to talk about, you know, health, uh, working out, making sure your, your nutrition is right. Uh, it's I mean, I can't emphasize how important that stuff really is. And, um, you know, it takes time for people to realize why and until, you know, until you lose your health or until you just look at yourself and go, man, like I need to start taking care of my body and and you don't want to wait till you're in your 50s or 60s or 70s to start because then you just you've you've built up so many bad habits. So yeah. you, the younger you can start, the better. You know, get on the right track, and uh, and it all makes sense. So thanks, thanks again, Zayvon. As as for everybody else, um, remember that we have the Meme Factory podcast that goes live on the same channel, 7:30 p.m. Um, every Thursday. And uh, remember uh, what you see here, what you hear here, when you leave here. Don't just let stay here. Please like, subscribe, uh, give us a comment. Let us know if you liked it, if you hated it, if we're wrong, if we're right. Let us know. And uh, as for Bitcoiners Guide, episode 41 from Mr. Zavon Jackson, Plan Marcus, and Big Sean, we're over and out. Peace.